All right, what's up everybody? Hope you guys are doing well. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about healthcare, some of the changes in healthcare going on with this current uh, emergency situation and, and all of the different things that, that may change in the future, some for the better, some for the worse. But first, guys, I really want you to go check out Stride Funding, stridefunding.com. If you're uh, trying to get your... Uh, Masters, if you're trying to get your uh, secondary education in healthcare or the sciences, go check out Stride Funding. They have some really, really good programs for you guys. Also, it would mean a lot to me if you would go check them out because if you check them out and you click on the link below, it helps me out, shows them that I'm I'm driving traffic to them. So I would really appreciate it if you would go do that. Now, let's get on with today's video. So talking about this current crisis that we're in right now, everybody knows what's going on. It's extremely stressful times. Uh, I see that New York's getting hit really, really bad, but I wanna talk about some of the negatives and positives that's going on in, in this current environment for healthcare workers. For me, I think I, I'm gonna kinda talk about my personal experiences in the ER and some of the things that I've dealt with uh, in the ER that I see that are negative, but also positive. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the negative aspect of working in the ER or as a healthcare worker in general. Um, so I think probably the number one negative aspect is that is your mental health, is your emotional health, your anxiety. You know, when this thing first came out, because there's a lot of stuff we still don't know. You know, I'm hearing multiple things coming in from all these other different sources of media saying, hey, these, this, this amount of people are dying. This amount of people dying over here. So you really don't know. I mean, there's even doctors with me in the ER that fully don't know really what this, what this current virus really is capable of. Now, you know, on the surface, it seems like, hey, if you're an elderly person with comorbidities, you're at the higher, highest risk. But at the same time, I'm hearing th stuff about, hey, younger people are dying, healthcare workers are dying, what's going on there? We're getting a lot of anecdotal evidence and nothing really solid yet because it's such a new virus. So I think that, you know, that unknown, that anxiety that goes with the unknown, that's probably the scariest point. Now, I want to I want to kind of follow up with that and talk about your own personal philosophy, uh, except, you know, accepting your fate. And I, and I don't mean that in a, in a in a negative sense or or in a sense that, hey, you just got to go in there and work. No, I'm, I'm saying these types of things happen in everyday life. You get hit by a car, you could get cancer. You can get other viruses. You can get whatever. There's all this stuff out there that can kill you. And this just adds to it. Now, plus with this stuff being constantly in the media 24-7, the coronavirus, the coronavirus, it, it's just constantly in the media. And it gets a little frustrating because it's like, all right, there are people dying. But at the same time, if you put this same kind of focus on the flu virus, right, and you just really focus in on the flu virus and you focus in on everything, every testing, Hell, I've got tests in the, on, on the flu virus three or four times, three or four positives on a shift. That's not unusual during flu season. So, I'm, you know, the fact that we're overly focusing on this kind of makes it worse as well. Um, and I think that, you know, we got to put all of this in perspective. But the problem with that is trying to get the real information and not just take all this anecdotal evidence and try to make it in, and try to use it as perspective. So I think that, you know, just just having a full full knowledge and kind of an acceptance of that, hey, anything can happen to us, not just as healthcare workers, but in any day life. And really understand that and um, and you know and learn how to deal with that properly because if you let this thing get out of hand, you can get anxiety, it may lead to depression, it may lead especially when you're cooped up all day, you know, you're you're working your shift and then you go home and then you're quarantined. You can't go have a beer. You can't go hang out with your friends. You can't do whatever, you know, and that's I think that's a big aspect of of this thing is also the mental, the mental aspect, the emotional aspect. So I would definitely say that would probably be the, the number one negative. Now, I want to talk about one of the positive things that can really come out of this is, is, is how we deal with, with crises such as this in the future, you know, especially from the healthcare side. I think it's obvious now we need to make sure we have uh, all of our PPE, all of our masks, you know, things like that because, and be prepared for that. Because what if another virus comes out in the future? I mean, viruses are a part of life. We have to, you know, if you're not, if you didn't know that, if you're in healthcare and didn't know that, I'm, I'm sorry, but viruses are a part of life just like we are. It's how we respond to it and how we prepare for these public emergencies that's so important. And, um, and that kind of puts it in perspective too, you know, understanding that, hey, 
Viruses are a part of life. And the positive aspect that can come out of that is, hey, we need to be prepared to treat these situations. I remember when the, uh, when the AIDS virus and HIV were, were just rampant in the late 80s and early 90s. And, you know, it was so bad there. The fear was so bad there that it was, you know, it was a homosexual disease and all this bad propaganda that came out during that time. And it showed that, hey, we weren't prepared then, but now we have a different monster here. We have a different thing we have to deal with. And you don't want to, you know, you want to be prepared. And I think that the medical community will grow from this. The science will grow from this and how we respond to this virus will grow. Now, um, I'm going to work again tomorrow in the ER. So hopefully I'll have another video for you guys and I can talk about it more, but there's a lot of good stuff going on. I don't think, um, you know, part of me, some, some days I'm like, oh man, this, this thing is going to pass. And then some days I'm like, uh, this is going to be really, really bad. And I think that's kind of the ebb and flow of normal emotions in life. But, but anyways, guys, I just wanted to talk about kind of the, a negative and a positive aspect of this virus and, and how we're going to come through this because we're going to get through it. You know, again, I talked on the other video about, you know, I'm more worried probably long-term uh, economic issues for the country more than I am actually the virus. We just got to get through this part first. Um, but anyways, guys, I'll have another video tomorrow. I'm about to shoot, pump out a lot of videos here uh, now that I have some time to record some videos and, and write my thoughts down and get a lot more videos out. So, um, so yeah. So anyways, guys, y'all have a good one. Peace out.